Welcome back to the Mecca's Gonna Learn YouTube channel. I don't know why I've been doing that official intro. YouTube channel. The Mecca's Gonna Learn YouTube channel. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? It's Lauren and Alicia back with a fun... Back again. Back again with a fun new craft. We are going to be sublimating... Oh, did I tell a secret? I don't know. Did you tell a secret? Oh, we're going to be we're showing gonna you We're going to be a mess-free glitter tumbler. Yes, and we are going to be sublimating. I already said it, so yep. whatever. Um, this is a really fun way to do glitter tumblers if you are not into glitter, but yep. you love how they look. Because I know you know what they say about glitter. You know, you know what they say. I mean, you know what they say. <laughs> so you know, once you catch it, you can't get rid of it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so something Clorox runs uphill from. Right. <laughs> So we're going to show you all how to do it today is like the most easiest thing ever. Um, we're going to show you where you can get the tumblers we're using. Um, it's actually pretty, I mean, I love it. These I look really too. good. They really do. And I feel like the thumbnail doesn't do it justice. So I'm hoping whenever I show you all like overhead, they can really see it. Because yeah. it's really pretty in real life. So anyways, there's that. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Howdy. We got a howdy. We have... Um, 39 with us right now. Okay. Drop us an emoji if you are actually drop us where you're visiting us from. Yeah. That's one thing I feel like I talked about a lot like months ago, but I love seeing like the reach that we have mm -hmm. on our channel. Um, it always blows my mind how far y'all are away from us. It really does. <laughs> I was actually trying to convince Alicia to use our new uh, sublimation adhesive spray. Mm, yeah. Y'all. Makes me nervous. I've used it, and y'all, I don't think I'll ever go back to tape. Well, what? Okay, so say I did. Okay. Say I was doing a tumbler wrap. If y'all uh -huh. sublimated and you've wrapped a tumbler, well, what if I put my line it up and it ain't lined up? Because it dries like pretty fast, right? It does. Can you spray it and then spray it with Windex? Like spray your cup with Windex? No, that wouldn't I've work. not tried that. That wouldn't work. That wouldn't I would work. think that it would be the easiest to spray it, put it on the tumbler, line up like one edge of it, like right. the top and the bottom, and then just turn the tumbler on and let it roll. Okay. And it, it, it adheres to it. I also wonder if it would be really good for like not full wraps. Like if you were It would just, be great for not full wraps. Right. I mean, but I also think that it would work. I'm going to be testing it for full wraps. Yeah, we should test it for full wraps. I think it, already we could, like if this weren't a full wrap, we could use it today and it'd be like nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, I'm really curious to see how it works though, so I would like to play around with it. Lots of people from Canada, Pennsylvania, Anaheim, California, Canada. Yay. Yeah, cool. Love it. I love it. So we're still running our half off monthly member special, right? Yes, we still are. So if you are new to our channel, first of all, if you're new and you don't know what we do, um, we are a craft education channel where we bring mm -hmm. you inspiration, motivation, and education to not only get your Cricut and other things out and use them, but to also master them. Right. So we have a our website. We have all kinds of um, education like booklets, the 30 Days to Master Your Cricut Challenge. Courses. Courses. Um, there's a silhouette course, a brother scan and cut course all kinds of different things mm -hmm. um, that is available to you once you become a member. Monthly members, you all get the same as a yearly member. The only difference is our yearly members get access to our yearly member summit, which has exclusive um, projects, and they also get a little bit more of a discount. But if you just want to get your toes wet before you really jump in full force, getting that at the monthly membership at half off for $9.99 is really the way to go it because really you is. also get commercial licenses right which is just new like we just now started doing yeah. that we haven't done that for the whole time so uh, which commercial licensing basically means that you can make and sell stuff with our stuff on it there's right. like very there's probably like a handful of files that you can't use to resell which they're marked on our website uh -huh. um, but there's like thousands of other cut files that you can use so lots of oh, options Patrick's here with us today hi Patrick hi friend how are you did you see well, did you see our did unboxing see? oh he did see our unboxing yeah um, we cut with the Julia yesterday if you all are unfamiliar the Julia is the new Caesar die cutting machine um, it's gorgeous it's so good it's so good it, we were <laughs> Sadie was laughing at me because I said I could cut this beside my baby's crib and like she wouldn't wake up yeah because it's so quiet 
Um, yes. So we've been playing around in the software for that. Um, but it's Marina asked, how was the test on the Juliet? Um, we cut through, you all know, we did, on Monday we did the Tech Wrap yes. review. Which we realized on the Cricut, like the settings were a little off. We had to go in and make custom settings, and I think that really helped it. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't even change the settings on the Juliet. And, I, and thing, it was metallic. Butter. Yeah. Butter. I cut a metallic tech wrap vinyl without changing any settings on the Juliet, and it cut so clean. If I was using regular vinyl, it would have been even better. Like it would have just slid right off. So I'm really excited to keep playing around with it. I'm really, I, I can't too. wait for the final software product. Like I'm, I'm ready for like yeah. the final stage of the software to be yeah. done because that's gonna really do it for me. If if that's amazing, like it's I gonna think be, you'll be a changed woman. I'm gonna be like secretly in there using <laughs> the, the Juliet. I'll be like, yeah, I got this on the Cricut. <laughs> Day. Well, anyways, Carol's running and gardening. Carol's always in the garden. Listen, girl, is is there ever is there an off gardening season? Like, or I mean, do winter. you? So, like, you don't garden at all. No one gardens in the winter. I mean, if you have a greenhouse, you can. Oh, you can't garden outside at all. I don't think so. Everything's dead. Oh well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a gardener. I'm not. I feel like you still like harvest and do stuff in the winter. I don't know. Carol, let us know. I need. To, I need some tips. Obviously, the only gardening I do is I plant tulips in the fall because tulips are my favorite. And all I have to do is dig a hole and stick a bulb in, and nature yeah. takes over. <laughs> so, nature doesn't run. Its course. Yeah, I don't have to do anything at all. So. Oh, that's so funny. Yes, we should not be quick to judge, We're especially not with quick the vinyl. To judge. Um, but we do. We did end up really liking TechRap. We just had to adjust the settings. If you're using TechRap for the first time, make sure and check that video out because you definitely need to go in there and change your settings. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be disappointed. Right. Um, we were very quick to judge. We missed a step. Yes. And we changed our mind um, after we fixed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, anyways, we're converted, um, but yeah. I guess should we go ahead and should we go ahead and start? I think so. Okay, let's get into it. This is really like not a super super difficult craft today, uh, but if we'll go overhead, I'll show you all everything that you're going to need to complete this craft. So this is the this is the final product right here. This is something I designed in Canva. I'm a little obsessed with this design. If you want me to be honest, I'm kind of proud of it. Uh huh. Personally, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's going to be my cup. This is Lauren's <laughs> Christmas cup. I made it especially for her. But I really want you all to be able to see this glitter here, okay? Like, I don't know if y'all can see it. Like this? Yeah. Can you see that? Sparkly, sparkly. So it's like a shimmer sparkle. And you can even see it on the bottom here. I've got some heat tape left over. But you can kind of see on the bottom here, this is glittery. I'm hoping that it's translating well to you all because it's really gorgeous in real life. This is um, the blank ones that we have. This it's is not translating as well as I, like now that I've seen it, it's caught up. You can see it, but for some reason it's not translating as well over the camera as it is in person. Right. This is like a iridescent, like holographic glitter. Yes. I would say. It's very, very pretty. Um, it's not flat. I mean, you can tell it's glittery. So this is our little hack. So this is actually a sublimatable tumbler. Um, they are from jpplus.com. And they actually have, they've got white. They have a discontinued purple one that they're still selling on the website. There's a mint and a pink. And so they're all glitter. And you can sublimate on them, which I think is really cool. Um, and you like don't have to seal it. You don't have to deal with glitter. It's like totally mess free, which is amazing. Um, but the links are for those. The links for those are below. If you all are interested in checking out these tumblers, I want to say they're like six ninety five or seven ninety five a piece, which is not that bad. Um, especially if you're just literally sublimating the markup on these. If you're going to sell them, like you're going to profit like forty bucks because I could sell this for fifty dollars. I have no doubt in my mind I could sell this for $50. What do you think? I think 50 is a little steep. Okay. 30. Okay, let's say we sold it for 30. I would I would be comfortable selling it 35 to 40. Okay. 35 if or 40. Probably That's probably more, more realistic, really. Well, probably more on the 35 side. And the only reason I say that is because normally the very, um, very intricate, like epoxy 
tumblers with the that layers. have different layers are more on the 50 side. You're so right. this is more like a 35 tumbler, I think. Right. But still, you think of the markup. So if you bought it, how much did you say it was per tumbler? Six ninety five. Six ninety five. So let's just say after tax and shipping, eight, nine dollars. Right. Let's say nine dollars on the high side um, after tax and shipping and everything else. And then yeah. you turn around and sell it for 35, you're still making about $25, $26 profit. Right. So, like, not that bad. Is, that is a 200% profit, at least. N not only that, but, like, you can pump these out, <laughs> like, so fast. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. get your convection oven on, like, print out 10 of these, and then sublimate 10 of them right back to back. You can do two. I haven't done more than two uh, tumblers in the convection oven, but I think you can. You definitely can. <clears throat> you have to consider, like, putting more in there. It's going to disperse the heat a little bit more so the yeah. times may be different. But what I'm trying to say is you could do a bunch of these and sell them at a pretty decent uh, profit margin. So what you're going to need besides the tumbler, I've got a tape measure here. Um, I've got heat tape. I have a paper cutter. You can use scissors or a paper cutter. Paper cutter is going to give me more of an exact um, cut. And then I've got our design already printed, but I'm going to walk you all through exactly how to um, print this design this file is already created and linked for you all below so you're not i think it should be linked now i texted courtney before and i was like did we link that because i made it and i didn't want you all to have to go through the process of making this entire thing um i did use the maker's gonna learn uh fonts for this um but i designed it in canva and it was kind of a process so i was like we'll just make it into a file and that way y'all don't have to worry about it <clears throat> and then i've got shrink wrap now Lots of people ask where to get this shrink wrap. I think you can buy it separately, but every time that I buy sublimation tumblers, they send me shrink wrap. Every time. When we well, before we use shrink wrap, I was like, why do they keep sending me shrink wrap? Well, some and then of we them, figured it out. You definitely need to look. Some of the boxes that I've seen, it's just the tumbler, like it doesn't for some reason doesn't come with a straw or other things. Oh uh, yeah. But you can buy the shrink wrap by itself. Now. Yeah. One thing I do, and I saw this in the Facebook group, and one thing I want to address with you guys, if you are not doing a full wrap, which means you're not, you don't have the paper on the full tumbler, right? You need to cover your cover your tumbler with butcher paper or another sheet, a copy paper, a copy paper, anything yeah. before you put that shrink wrap on your tumbler because if you don't. When you put it in the oven, it's going to melt to your tumbler. Yeah, and it don't yes. come off. I mean, unless y'all got a tip on how to get that off, it does not come no. off. And so. these are true straight-sided tumblers. Oh, yeah. We don't, listen, we don't buy tamper. If we have tamper tumblers in here, it's on accident. Yeah. Or it's a Starbucks cup. Yeah. Um, but we use the straight edge. I did do a tutorial on how to make, um, like, the template for a tapered edge on the... Um, the layering vinyl project that I did, I, there's a website where you can go and you can make like a template for a taper tumbler. But listen, just just don't get taper tumblers. Just don't do it. It just makes your life harder, especially with sublimation. Um, if I am doing sublimation, I'm going to get a straight edged tumbler. It's just easier, especially if I'm doing a full wrap. Um, and then I have over here a little container full of ice water. Um, Y'all are probably like, what are you doing with that? Unless you've been to a sublimation tutorial with us, we use this after we pull it out of the oven. I'll show y'all how to do that. I've got our trusty convection oven as well as gloves. And that's all you need. Okay. That's all you need. So we did have a, somebody ask, okay. do we have to use shrink wrap? Let's mm. address that. Um, okay, so we used to never not, like, we used to not really ever use shrink wrap, and we had to make sure, for one, we're using a convection oven, so we had to make sure that our paper was fitted on there really tightly, because when you sublimate, you need pressure and heat. If you just have heat and no pressure, you're going to get a lot of ghosting in spots where you don't want it. Um, the shrink wrap basically hugs your design onto your tumbler, and then when you put it in the heat, You've got heat and pressure, which is what you need, and your design is a lot more flawless. Yes. So. I feel like I've talked about this before, <coughs> but I'm going to talk about it again, just because I want to make sure you all really understand it. So, sublimation ink, it, what happens is when it is heated up, the ink turns into a gas. Mm -hmm. The gas then adheres to the polymers. Right. In whatever you're doing. So, 
You can even coat stuff with polycrylic. Now, I like for example, I coated a tile, an arabesque tile ornament, where we, we, we've been playing around with some different um, things here in the studio um, to see if I could sublimate and make a tile ornament um, using a coating of polycrylic, which you can because it has polymers in it. Now, um, but anyway, back to what I'm getting at. It has to have the polymer to stick to. So that ink heats up, turns into a gas. From there, the gas moves to, and it tries to find the closest polymer. So if there is like a wide area between your paper and your cup, it's gonna kind of gonna bounce around until it finds the closest, so it's gonna look faded. If it is hugged up against it and there's nowhere else for it to move, it's gonna go from the paper to the cup and be crisp, clean, and perfect. Right. Okay. Um, that was a great explanation. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get logged into Canva. Hold on. You're fine. Um, Marianne asks, if I have a tumbler press, do I need shrink wrap? So I don't think that you do because it gives you that pressure. However, I'm not gonna say a hundred, I'm, because I, we, ha, we actually bought a heat press, a tumbler press the other day because I'm gonna be, I'm be I've been working on an update for, um, I have been working on an update for our sublimation course, just so you guys know, and um, I'm going to be testing out that tumbler press. I have not yet, but I'm going to be testing um, with shrink wrap, without shrink wrap, so stay tuned, stick around, I will for sure let you know. But if it was just me, um, if I was just thinking, hey, I've got a tumbler press, it, it gives me the pressure, I would try it without, the, without it first. My computer just died. I was trying to see what email we use to log into Canva because for some reason we're logged out. Normally we're like just permanently logged into everything. Do you know? Let me look. Okay. <laughs> My computer just, I've been logged in all morning. Um, it's not like super necessary, um, but I would really like to show you the image in Canva. See, I've been wanting <coughs> to use my personal Canva. Okay. Oh, wait, here, a, a little craft in your day. A little craft in your day. That's yes, what I was thinking. Okay, continue mm -hmm. with email. Let's try here. Hold the phone, everybody, at Gmail, right? Calm. Carol says I need to wear a scientist lab coat. Listen, I don't know if you all have kind of um, figured it out by now, but my um, degree is actually in education. Uh, that's what I went to school. I went to school to be a teacher. Um, science and math were always my favorite subjects. So we are opposite in that way. I'm a nerd. <laughs> I, listen, I love the preciseness of science and math, which is odd if you you all, if you, like, Alicia knows me on a personal level. I'm right. not a very precise person, but for some reason, the preciseness with science and math just always fascinated me. It's so funny because me and Lauren are really opposite in that way. Like, in terms of, I was in English, like, I was always really good at English and spelling and stuff like that. Um, and then Lauren became a teacher and I became a nurse. Yeah. And now we're here. <laughs> and also... Well, no, we're both pretty extra about our crafts. I was going to say I'm a little bit more like anal retentive about things, but we're pretty equally anal retentive, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Okay, I'm pulling this up. Here's my file. Okay. Somebody, real quick, somebody asked why isn't the reindeer cut file available on Makers Gonna Learn? Uh, please explain which reindeer you're talking about. If yes. it's this one we're talking, if it's this one we're half, but like, explain. Um, if the file is not there, it will be there before to the, the end of the day because it was supposed to be in there before um, we started, which I thought it was, which is totally fine. We have it. Okay. It's here. Um, but what I've done here, I've already designed this in Canva. So whenever you open it, you can open the file up in Canva or whatever design software that you're using. It doesn't necessarily have to be Canva. Um, it's just a PNG file. So I've got my PNG here and then... If this, I'm printing onto, um, I'll print it into the Sure Color printer, which automatically, the it's Epson, right? Epson Sure Color? Yeah. The Epson it prints F it reflected. Like mm -hmm. the sublimation printer prints it reflected, so I don't actually have to reflect my image. Um, but if you're not using that specific printer, you're going to want to go ahead, change your file name to whatever you're going to be able to remember. Um, my measurements for this... Let's just go up here. If I select resize, 
So my width is 9.625 and my height is eight inches. That is the measurements of my tumbler. So whatever tumbler you get, you need to make sure that you're measuring the top circumference. So not the lid, we're just measuring the top circumference here all the way around. And let's see what it goes to. I'm trying to line it up to the top edge as best as I can. And we've got a little bit, bit or right at nine and a half. So there's nine and a half, and then you're gonna measure this way from the top to the bottom. And we've got a little under eight. So make sure whenever you go back into Canva, you have your image set to exactly the size that your tumbler is. So what I'm gonna do next is I am going to download my image. So I'm gonna go download. I've got it as a PNG and then I'm gonna select a download here. And that's just gonna load and then we'll open it back up. It's gonna pop down here. So we've had a couple people um, say that they um, need a Canva tutorial. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you not working on one? I already filmed one. That's what I thought. I already filmed it's one. It's just not been released, correct? right? I don't know when it's planning to come out. So but I, it is coming out, just an FYI. Yes, I filmed a Canva. It's Canva Beginners for Sublimation, too. So I kind of go over, like, how to flip your image and all that. That should be coming out. But we've done a little tidbits. Like, if you watch our sublimation videos, um, like our free content, you're going to be able to see us, like, doing this type of thing um, and showing you all how to reflect your images and different things you can do in Canva. Um, but this, this video tutorial that I made, it's, like, all-encompassing. So yes. you don't have to go to like 15 different videos to find all the tips. Also, they said that it was the one listed in the supply list, and I went down to the bottom, and I actually cl clicked that link, and it worked for me. Oh, it did? It did. Okay, cool. So what you'll do before you print, I'm trying to, let's see, file, print, okay? And then what I'm going to do is go to this drop-down menu and open in preview again, which sounds crazy, but I can flip my image here. So what I'm going to do is find it. Why, why is my brain not working? I want to flip my image. Hold on. Yeah. Um, is it not popping up? Am I crazy right now? What are you looking for? I'm just trying to flip my image from preview. I mean, oh, I guess we could do it. We could do it here. Nope, that's going to rotate it. Let's see. Make sure that that's selected because sometimes it could be in the front oh, and not be selected. Maybe. Okay, let's go file. Hold on, everybody. Hold the phone. Normally what I do is open it in preview and then I flip my image. You all have seen me do this like a thousand times. That's why I'm like, am I missing something here? Oh. See, they're right here. Normally, this is my option. Let's see if we can flip it here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, let me start from the beginning. So, you've got your file. We saved our file. I'll just save it again. We're going to download. We're going to save it. We're going to open it back up. And whenever I open this, I can go to Tools, and I can flip horizontally. That's going to mirror my image. If you are new to sublimating, you need to make sure that you're mirroring your image every single time before you print because whenever we apply it to our piece it's going to apply the correct way so you need a mirrored image right here that's what we've got and then you're going to send it to your printer and Quick then question okay we had someone ask um just so you guys know this file is already created for you mm -hmm. but we had someone ask do you remember specifically what fonts we use let's we can go into canva and look um, let's see here. I've got Constellation is this Dancer. Every other font, so Dancer, Vixen, Tequila, and Blitzen, those are all Constellation. And then Ambrosia. Gotcha. Well, I should have linked those, but I bet I didn't because we're using the file. But it's Ambrosia and Constellation. Honestly, best font combination I've used in a really long time. It is a great. It's like very whimsical and fun. Yes. I really like it. So, um, what you're going to do, where's my image? Where'd she go? Okay, so we've got a reflected image here. And then you're going to go File, Print. 
and we're going to pick whatever printer you're using. We're going to use US letter size, 8.5 by 11, and I'm not going to scale it. I'm just going to keep it exactly how it is. Um, what you can do sometimes, depending on where you're printing it from or printing it to, um, I'm just going to keep that on auto select, but I always want to select best. That way we're printing at the highest quality and then you're going to print and that's it. That's all she wrote. And then, so if we go overhead, this is my image here and I've got something like on it. I don't know what happened there, but this is my image. This is what it looks like. And it, my green looks a little dark, so I'm like wondering if our sure color is low in ink or if it's just going to be different when I okay, sublimate it. Okay, so if you printed that from the sure color, <clears throat> did you do color matching or did you let it just automatically? Probably just let it automatically because I didn't change okay, anything. so the sure color, it prints darker if you do not do color matching. Okay, well. So that green is going to be darker. Well, I think we should just sublimate it anyways and see what and see happens. What it looks like. yeah. yeah. So I'm going to turn my oven on. So um, the good thing about this one is you don't have to have your large format printer. Right. You can we just, just print this, this on a regular. On eight and a half by eleven paper. Okay. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna pump my time up to like forever. Okay. Some people are saying that they've tried the reindeer names file and it says it can't be found, but I keep clicking it and it takes me right to it. Refresh your, if it's not working for you, refresh your screen and try yeah. to click it again and see what happens. It may just be like where we just uploaded it. That could probably be it. Okay. So I'm going to let this heat up. I've got it at 385. Um, I just put it on a random time because this thing won't, like I haven't, I, this confuses me so I always turn the time up really high so that it preheats without turning off mm -hmm. and then what we're going to do while that's heating up is measure our paper so I've got well not measure it but cut it so I've got my paper here I'm going to move this out of the way I'm going to tell y'all exactly what to search in our cut files for that okay <clears throat> so because I'm going to we've had multiple people say that's so weird Okay, I'm just going to be trimming off all of these white edges. Ooh, I love a paper cutter. Mm -hmm. Just makes my life so much easier. We're going to slide this in just like so. Okay. I wonder, I, I'm going to double check with our customer service team because when I go to try to search it, it's not searching correctly and mm. I wonder if they've published it. Like if I have access to it because. And that's why it's working. For me and not for everybody else. Right. Okay, so we're gonna get that taken care of. Okay. Yeah, we'll get the file ready for y'all. So I'm just trimming this up, making sure everything is nice and clean. Okay, I'm gonna actually take scissors. I've got a little edge right here that I wanna cut off. My paper cutter is shredding my paper. Should I buy a new blade? Probably. Yeah, if you, um, <coughs> excuse me. If you can, I would. Yeah. Okay, so after I cut it, what I like to do is see if I'm gonna take the lid and straw out of my tumbler and I'm going to try and line this up. So I'm just gonna line it up. I didn't grab my lint roller. Uh oh. Who am I? Oh, Sadie restocked our drawers so we have things on hand at all times. Look, it's working, it's working for us. Okay, so before I do this, because if I get it perfectly lined up, I'm going to tape it. I'm going to take a lint roller and roll it over my tumbler to make sure that if there's any debris or like any oils or anything like that, it's going to come off. You could also clean this with alcohol. I know lots of people like to do that. Okay, there is hair wrapped around this. That's nice. Probably mine. It's real life though, you know? It's a dark hair, like black hair almost. I guess you're Once again, probably mine. Yeah, I think mine's the darkest dark. in the office. 
Oh my gosh. Listen, I worked at the movie theater like for years in high school. Me and my husband actually both worked there. But one time, these people, okay, I'm usually the only redhead. Like, it's just, I feel like it always happens, like, at work or wherever. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, like, working. I just clocked in. I literally just clocked in. And somebody comes up to the counter, and they're like, there's a red hair in my popcorn. And I was like, is there, Karen? Because I literally just walked in. Like, there's nobody else here. <laughs> there's no one else here. She's like, yeah, there's, like, if I'm over there, she's like, yeah, there's a red hair. And, like, she's talking to the manager. I was like, I don't even know you. Like, I don't even know you. I just got here. There's, I didn't even, I haven't served any popcorn. Like, there's literally no way. But anyways, I loved working at the movies. That was my most favorite job I ever had. Besides this one, of course. Okay, I'm just lint rolling the heck out of this. Then I'm gonna sit this back into the drawer. Okay, let's try to line it up. Can y'all see what I'm doing here? Okay. I'm just going to line her up and I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit long. So we may end up having to trim it, but I just grabbed that edge you Can already tell I'm a little bit crooked. Man, I'm telling y'all getting tumblers straight. It's, it's a, a process. Skill. It is a process. Process. Okay. So right now, this isn't perfectly lined up. But also, not only that, we have a pretty big lip he here, excuse me. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna say, I can even measure that because I want to trim this little lip off. I mean, it's hardly even, it's like a quarter of an inch, not even. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just gonna trim off a little bit off of this edge. Just a little bit. I'm trying to get really good at my seams. It's a work in progress. I'm not that great. I won't even lie. So we have had people, first of all, um, Jackie. <coughs> she says she's have a, had a whole case of tumblers from around Christmas and haven't even opened. What are you doing? <gasps> Come on. Open them up. Open them now. I dare you. Dare you. That's hilarious because... Um, Jacqueline said, I'm going to dare myself to sublimate today. Oh, my gosh. You don't have to dare yourself, girl. We sub we, we dare you. We dare we you. We dare you. Listen, y'all, I think I just cut it too short right after I said. Patrick says, I double dare you. <laughs> I'm going to one-up Patrick. I double dog dare you. Double dog dare. Double dog dare you. You heard it first, people. Okay. I think I cut it short, but let's just see. That is a great question. Crystal said, what would happen if you didn't trim it? Okay. So, if I... Uh, Y'all, I might have just done a really good job with that scene. Um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I made it too short, and it's like literally perfect. Literally perfect. <laughs> um, if I did not, you would likely get lots of ghosting. Um, this one I cut too short, but you can see ghosting on here, right here. And you can also see where I cut my paper too short, and so there's a white line all the way around. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of what would happen. But what I'm gonna do today, I've got hope and I've got hope in myself. I'm gonna try to do this one better than the first one. Always trying to be better than I was before. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna line this up as good as I can. Oh, I think Carol may have just figured like I think she may have hacked the system. Okay, look what? She says I use a in parentheses wad of sticky stuff from the ATG gun to hold the sheet in place until I line up the paper. It sticks and unsticks so easy and then I can use the tape once it's lined up. Oh, that's smart. Smart girl. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good. Jen says she overlaps her seams just a little bit. The that's, only issue is if it's a little crooked. This is, that's what I'm doing right now. That's why I'm feeling like it's going to work because I'm overlapping it just a little bit. Um, and also, whenever you all go to tape, make sure that you are completely covering that seam just to, seam just to prevent any ghosting. And I am just gonna keep on taping all the way down. Uh, there it is. Okay, Jill, thank you so much. Jill said the cut file is showing up now. If you can't find it per the link, 
um, then you need to um, search drinking reindeer. Drinking reindeer. Drinking reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Not once me. once this is taped, I'm going to take my fingernail and go up the seam. This is going to really seal this in and prevent any ghosting. The less bubbles you have in your tape is also going to be very helpful in preventing ghosting. So we're just going to make sure and do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some tape around the top edge. Not as much as I used to. I used to go ham. Y'all, if y'all watched my first sublimation tutorial, then you know. Um, that was also before I used shrink wrap. So, yep, shrink wrap is where it's at. I'm also just going to kind of fold this paper so it's at least touching the edge. And then whenever I apply the shrink wrap, it's really going to hug it in there. The bottom is always hard to get to yeah. not ghost. Honestly, what I should do is probably trim up the bottom so there's not so much kind of over the edges, if that makes sense. I'm just going to tape this down. I know this is a lot. I'm feeling hopeful in this tumbler though. Like I'm feeling like I want this to look better than the last one. Not that the last one was bad. It was good. Just not like my best work, you know? You know what I didn't grab, Lauren? What? The heat gun. Oh, wait, would you like in here, Sadie? Oh my gosh. This one's fine. The mini one will work. Okay, so I've got a heat gun here for my shrink wrap. I meant to tell you all you might need that if you're using shrink wrap. You can also use a hair dryer. Yep, um, hair dryer will work just fine. So, okay, that's another good question. Is there any way <clears throat> you, is there any way to take the image off if you mess up the first time? So, Alicia actually did a video. Was it a live or a video? It's a video. Is it has it been released yet? Mm hmm It did. It was. Last week. Yes. So, she did a video where she is correcting um, a messed up tumbler. So, you can actually bake sublimation off to an extent. Right. You can bake it off. And then re. And then re-sublimate over it with a dark color. Okay? Yes. Okay? So, you can't do... Excuse me. You cannot, um, what am I trying to say? Words are hard. You can't do a dark pattern and then try to sublimate over a dark pattern with a light pattern. Right. Thank so. you. Um, okay. I'm taped up. I'm as taped as I'm going to be. Um, I've got the oven preheating to, it's at 385. And I don't have it on any specific setting. Um, I just kind of turned it on to 385. And then we are going to shrink wrap our cup. I've got a shrink wrap sleeve. We use the Epson Sure Color to print ours, but we also use an Epson Workforce 7710. Which, by the way, we got that years ago. Like, I'm wanting to say Tanner said like 2018. Mm -hmm. um, when printers were, when that printer was not $1,000. Right. I would keep an eye out. Um on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, yeah, resale places um, is going to be if you want the wide format like the workforce. That that's what I would do. I actually think we may be in the um, process of buying one that's been already already been in use, like a pre-owned one. Yes, this is so satisfying right here. Shrink wrapping. Jill said, I've seen a video where people put the shrink wrap cup into the oven loose and the heat from the oven tightened it. Have no. you tried it? We have not tried it. We just do it this way so we know for a fact like it's not going to move. I don't want my sublimation process to fully start until I stick it in the oven. Like, until this is on it, if that makes sense. I'd be scared of ghosting. It might work, though. I just, I mean, obviously I'm applying heat to it, but not like... 385 degrees of direct heat. So I've got this shrink wrap just like so. Yes. We also had somebody ask um, what function, temperature, and time on the convection oven. So did you hit the convection, like no, convection? I literally turned it on, which is what I normally do. Okay. Because Christina said I have some, I, she has the same oven and hers bakes differently if she doesn't choose convection. Mm. Well, I've been sublimating with this convection oven for months now, and I've never picked a setting. Um, but if yours does better that way, keep doing it because I don't, 
like everything's going to be a little bit different and your process may be a little bit different. So I don't want to be like, no, don't do that anymore or whatever. Um, this is just what works right. for me. Um, someone said earlier, do not put shrink wrap in the oven. We're putting this in here for four total minutes and I've never had an issue. Yeah, I didn't never. do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this in for two minutes. Just like so. Can you set a timer, Lauren? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to put it in here for two minutes. Okay, started. And then once it dings, we're going to rotate it for... Um, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and do two more minutes and then we're going to ice bath it. So that's going to be fun. I also want to mention something about the Epson printer. Can I mention my firmware problem? Yeah, go ahead. This because, is for their workforce, by yes, the way. This is, so we use the Epson workforce for sublimation, the 7710, the really expensive one. Um, if you are like in the market for one, I just want to say if you are using sublimation ink and you're not using like the standard cartridges, whenever you go to update your firmware on the printer, it could potentially like lock you out of using your printer. So like So what we're saying, do not update your firmware. Right. So it'll it's gonna prompt you, it's gonna be like, you need to update your firmware. Well, and that sounds like what you should do, because to me I was like, yes, do that. Um, no. Now it's saying ink cartridges are not recognized and it's not letting me use the printer like my ink cartridges are full i have made sure they're not clogged i'm telling you i have done literally everything and they're just not working and so now i'm in the process of installing chipless firmware and this may be like y'all are like i don't care well if you have an epson printer then you should care because especially if you're using it for sublimation just don't update your firmware just don't ever update. If you get it converted and you need to use it, like don't update your firmware ever. You can even, I don't know exactly how to turn it off. I need to. Like it's using like in the, the beta version. Right. Or you want to basically just use it how it is. If it prompts you to update it, that's, and you're having problems and it's like update your firmware, just don't. It's not the firmware that's the problem. It's probably just something else. Yeah. Um, because that was what happened with us and now I'm locked out of the. Yes. The printer. So I've been working on trying to get that fixed for three days. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a good fun time. It's okay, you're at your two minutes. Anyways, so, shoot, let me turn it. Um, <clears throat> there's like a class action lawsuit out about it right now. So just FYI. Just FYI. Okay, I'm just going to turn this. Oop. Would the air from the convection setting help move those gases around better? Um, Potentially. So here's the thing, I, I know that if you have the same printer or the same convection oven as us, I know Christina said and then we had someone else say that it burned theirs as well if they did not have it on the convection setting. This is literally just like everything else, um, like every other oven. It can be the exact same oven but they're still different and right. they're gonna for some reason they cook different That's so right. you have to learn your oven um learn what works what doesn't work we're telling you what we've done and we hope and pray that it's the best thing that and it works for you if you have the exact same one however when it comes to manufacturing manufacturing these ovens sometimes i don't know what it is they're just either. different they, they're yet? the same. We're at 53 seconds, 54. Oh, gosh. I'm like, is it time? No, it is not time. <laughs> it's um, cooking. I can see What it. about updates on the F-170? So that is a sure color printer. That is a specific um, sublimation printer. Your ink goes straight into, like, there are no cartridges that you have to take out and refill. You basically refill the printer. So that Which is one, how it should be. Anyway. That one <laughs> would be fine. Like, that one, we've not had, we've had zero issue. Um, the only downfall with the sure color is that I just, I really just wish they had that wide format. I know. We love a 13 by 19. I love a 13 by 19. I do. How many more seconds? Uh, you've got 20 more seconds. Chill. I'm stressed. Chill. I'm stressed. It felt like longer than two minutes. Um, I don't know. I think that... Yeah, so April made a good point. Right. I don't understand why Epson wants to destroy printers because they are being used as sublimation printers. They're still making money by selling so many of them. You are at your two minutes. They want that money, honey. They That's do. That's it. Okay. But... Ice bath. Can y'all hear it? 
I'm going to scooch. It looks cray cray. I've, I'm worried that it, this is over sublimated. No, no, I promise you it is the printer settings. It's the colors. I mean, but I think, I know, so we know the green's going to be a little different and maybe the red, but I still feel like I over sublimated it. I just have a feeling, you know, the sublimation feeling. I think feeling. you just let people, I like, I think you've let it, I don't know. We're about to find out. Okay, let's dump the water out, move the electrical stuff. Okay, There's so. I stuck in there. Tanner, I do remember, Tanner does say to choose the convection setting. Oh, okay. And Maker's going to sublimate. Well, um, and it may work better. Um, and Christina said that she forgot to choose it one time and it did burn. So that might be what, if you feel like it over sublimated, that might be the issue. Maybe. But Let's I mean, say. I've done them in the past without it. But I should use, we should standardly use the same settings just for, especially when we're teaching you all. Yeah, we should. Um, so if that's the case, I'm just going to start doing it. Okay. I'm just going to pull this off. Can you do this tumbler with this pattern without sublimation? I don't have a sublimation printer. So, um, the only issue that I would see running into this, you could probably do it with, um, is that red, like burnt red? I can't see it yet. Oh, okay. I can't see the exposed color yet. Um, anyway. Ooh, it's pretty. So might be. Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, snap. It's pretty. I like it. It's actually prettier red than... See, that's the one thing. There are certain colors. So when it comes to the Epson Sure Color printer, um, I, there were a couple things that I sublimated that I let it do the smart color matching. It's like the smart color sink, I think is the name of it. Um, and they come out super deep and beautiful. And then other colors were not what I wanted them to be. This green is so pretty. It's not the green that I chose, but the color is really pretty. We did not over sublimate, so that's good. My ghosting isn't as bad on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just splashed myself with water. My seam is much better, you guys. I'm proud of myself for that seam. It could be better, but like it's not. It's not like the last one. So it's, I mean, that's pretty much it. The ghosting is not as bad. I wonder if you all can see. Well, it's about the same on the bottom. So the bottom, this right here is like one of the harder parts about sublimating tumblers is getting that ghosting on the bottom to not be there and then the seam line. But other than that, I mean, she's cute. Okay, so some people said, I heard that placing it in cold water after taking it out of the oven can potentially um, cause cracking in the tumbler. That is with like a glass or a ceramic mug, tumbler, whatever. If you are using stainless, it's fine. Yes, it's fine. That blue come out not blue. Oh, it did, didn't it? It's white. The re it's weird because the red is Beautiful. Beautiful. The red and is the, the green looks brown. This is the original right here. This is the new one. I use different printers though. Yeah, so. different printers and different settings. Right. So each printer and settings are going to be completely different too. So do y'all have any any questions about that? Any question? The color doesn't change as the tumbler pulls. No. The same reason same. the color is different once again is because she used a different printer. And with that sure color printer, you have to go in and click um, color matching, not yes. the smart color, because the color matching, um, yeah, it's exactly what you see on the screen. This is like borderline over sublimated. I don't know if you all can tell. I can see it from here. Like how white you, that was one side is. This is the one original. This is the new one. This is a little bit more brown. And my words are a little bit more fuzzy. And that is, that is because we put it, kept it in the oven for a little bit too long. Just a little bit. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. But you can see my words are much crisper over here. Um, but that still looks good. They're still really cute. Here, we'll sit them, sit them over here. But it also, one thing that I was noticing, how white that looks yeah. compared to that looks gold. Right, but it doesn't look like, 
if this were a not glitter tumbler, you may be able to tell a lot more. Yeah. Is what I think. The glitter kind of disguises it a little bit. Yeah. Still cute. They're still really cute and fun. I'm definitely going to be using this. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Maybe with all of it in there. When I say over sublimated, I'm meaning that it's been in the oven a little bit too long. Yes. Um, and so basically those particles are just like floating around in the heat and they're under the pressure and they're just like floating around. When I pull it out and dip it in the ice, they're like, eat. they just stop. But if I don't, those particles go in and then they start to fizzle back out. They go yeah. into the polymers and then they fizzle back out. And so you get ghosting and burntness. <laughs> but what she also means by the over sublimating I don't know if y'all can see it really well, but this one right here, the white portion looks a little bit like beige, mm -hmm. I guess you yeah. could say, and this looks more white. So what has happened is, and it could be because we didn't use the convection setting. Yeah. It could have burnt. So what it, it when it burns, it like turns yellow. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so total minutes in the convection oven, we do two minutes, or 385, two minutes, Rotate at 90 degrees, two more minutes. Yes. And that's it. And then you pull it out and dunk it in yes. ice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, how many minutes total is four? Yep. Is what we did, two and two. But that's, once again, playing around with your settings. Um, if we were to do this one again, I would probably tell you turn it at, like, 130 or 145. Listen, I don't ever change the setting, and I do it two minutes and two minutes, and two it's and always fine. This oh, one fine. I made the exact way today, but what I think is we got a little extra seconds in there because I had you set a timer. Oh, yeah. That's what I think happened. Probably. <laughs> I, honestly, y'all, it, it makes a difference. Like, right when you put it in there, start that t start the timer. Right when you rotate it, start the second timer. Just, like, have your phone open, ready to go, or just use the timer on your convection oven. Um, Marina said, I just purchased a new tumbler tool from Etsy called Pinch Perfect, waiting to get it and see if it helps wrap tight and easier to tape. Oh. We may have to look into that. Yeah, that would be really nice. If I could find something that could help. Just, I need like another set of hands, you know? Yes. I need a taping hand and a holding hand and another holding hand. <laughs> oh, no. They have this oven and it yes. burns shrink wrap. I'm, I'm reading all of this. Um, the seam on this one came out really nice. Much better. Really nice. Do you see it? Much better. Do you not see it? Do you see it? It's 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 still not perfect, but it's getting there. It's still good. I'm not a pro tumbler maker, but you know, I'm here with like doing it like y'all are. So. Is the black ink showing black or is it different? Um, it's showing. It's still pretty black. It's, it's a little pretty, more roundy. Brownish. Yeah, it's more on the brown side than it's. It's still black, but more on the brown it's side like of a black. toasted black. <laughs> yeah, toasted black. Oh, that's so funny. Can this be yeah. done without sublimation? It won't be glittery. What I was getting at with a while ago is the file. That's where I where I think people are going to be um, have issues downloading okay. this file because it's it, it's a PNG. I don't yeah. think we have the SVG version, do we? No, but you all can um, take the fonts. We use Ambrosia and uh, Constellations. Yes. Um, and you can use basic shapes basic in shape. Canva to make all of it. Like, I literally use three stacked rectangles, and then the black lines can be skinny rectangles. And then I don't know if this comes with the basic shapes or if you have to have access, Cricut access to get this shape. But you can pull this shape in, and then every other word is constellations, every other word is ambrosia, and just plug it in. You can pick your colors um, of vinyl and put it on, and then put resin on it, and it would be really cute. Yeah. Actually, I think the inspiration for this one that I saw had this gold, like beautiful gold um, washi tape outlining everything. And it was yeah. so pretty. It was so pretty. But it was not a sublimated tumbler. It was like a... Um, an epoxy tumbler. I wish I knew where the original one was that inspired it, but. So Jen says, so even with seam issues, I'm not like not super noticeable. So this one I would call not super noticeable seam issues. This one might be more noticeable. She then asks, would you still charge the same price or would you discount a bit? This one would for sure, for sure if it was not burnt. If it wasn't burnt. If it was not burnt, it would be full price. This one, I might knock off a couple dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So. But honestly, the normal person's not necessarily going to notice it, I wouldn't say. Yeah. Um, but I just wouldn't feel comfortable 
selling something. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. selling something that I know wasn't my best. Yeah. So. Um, so you don't have to do this in Canva. You well, if you're doing it in for a tumbler, you like a sub. If you're sublimating, yes, you do need to do it in Canva. Um, that way you can get your exact measurements. If you are doing it with vinyl, um, if you wanted to create like the same saying with these fonts, um, whatever, then you would do it in Design Space so you could cut your vinyl. Right. That's the difference. And honestly, y'all, if you've got printable vinyl, um, I would print the names. I would do the design of the names and print that design with the, like this ticket shape right here with the yeah. names. I would print that on printable vinyl because it's going to be a nightmare trying to weed those words. A nightmare. Yeah, it would be. It would take forever. So if you could even do basic shapes for these and then do this on printable vinyl, you'll be good to go. It won't take you hardly any time to put that on there. So if y'all do that, show us pictures. I would love well, to see it. I'll see. <laughs> Okay. Does anyone? I know we. I know we had some more questions. Um, DTB on tumblers. Where did you see that? Somebody said it right. Keep going. Have you tried DTB on tumblers? No. We can't. It's tech. It's uh. Is it fa fabric only? Right. It's um textiles. Textiles yeah. only. Yep. Okay. I th I'm trying to go back. Oh, somebody asked air fryer versus convection. Convection. Don't use an air fryer. Don't. I mean, it can be done, but don't. It seems dangerous. <laughs> it, we have done it, but don't. <laughs> it seems so dangerous. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so Can funny. you go into Word to do the sublimation? I've never used Word for sublimation. I've never. First of all, Word does not work really well with Macs. I don't um, think you can pull PNGs into Word. You can pull JPEGs, but not PNGs. So maybe if you design it, just use Canva. It's free. Yeah. It's literally free. You have to sign up. Just if you don't have Canva, go ahead and sign up for Canva. They have a very good, um, like, options for just the free Canva. Like, you don't need to have, like, fancy Canva. Just get regular. You can use this file on there. Yeah. And do everything that we just did. No charge. Let's see. Delonda used it. We'll have to see. Yeah. And I've Listen, if y'all can use again, it, do it. Once again, Word does not is not as compatible with a Mac as it is a window. When I had a window computer, I used Word for like everything. So converting over to Mac, I've not used Word since. So can you even do Word on Mac? Um, it's very complicated. Oh, okay. But you can. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to play around with that. I have yeah. Canva. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Perfect then. Awesome. Um, our Word was easier for me, but now if you're getting into sublimation, you really should start to get comfortable with Canva because it's more designer friendly and it can be intimidating at first, but I think once you get into it and learn where everything is, it gets a lot easier. It's just getting in there and making yourself use it because when I first did it, I was like, eh. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really want to be in here. Um, but once you learn how to do it, it's, like, so easy. So easy. And that video that's coming out um, is very helpful. It's, like, very, like, cut and dry, step by step, how to yes. use it. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we will be back. Um, well, if you're a member, yes. we're going to be having a QA and a in the um, Facebook group members tomorrow. Online. Yep. And then next Tuesday, we will be back here with a live for you all, maybe even Monday with a little mini live. Yep. We'll see. So, if you are a member, get your questions ready. Yes. Um, actually, if you are a member and you have some questions, go ahead and shoot those over to hi at makersgonnalearn.com for us. Mm -hmm. That way we can get your answers and we can um, be ready yes. to answer whatever you We can you be have. ready to answer your questions, but <coughs> that we can also... We'll, we'll answer your live questions as well, but that way we can be a little bit more prepared right. having all of the stuff ready. So yeah. if you are going to be joining us tomorrow on our Facebook page um, for the live Q&A, make sure you send those over. Um, time for that tomorrow. 1.30. Normally when we do it on Facebook, we, go, we do it at 1.30. Yeah. So tomorrow at 1.30. All right. Well, we will see y'all. Next oh, time. Megan says you can drag and drop PNGs into Word. She just would not recommend it. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Okie doke. We will see you all tomorrow for the live Q&A. All right. Bye. Bye.